Today, I'm going to talk about a protein that you need to know about, and that is collagen. If you are somebody who's always wanted to have strong, youthful, radiant skin, and you also care about your joints, so you want them to be flexible and pain-free, you want to have a resilient body that ages well, then what you need to know is that boosting your collagen is actually very, very important. And today I'm going to show you the best foods and the best lifestyle habits that's going to help you repair and fortify your body's collagen. And that's really from the inside out so that you can actually thrive. All right. Because that's what we always do. Well, want to do in our lives is to actually thrive. Now, You've probably heard about collagen in beauty products or maybe even lip injections. You know, the uh, people that you see that look like really, really puffy lips. And maybe that kind of turns you off from the idea of collagen. Um, but it's true. Po collagen is found in cosmetics and in plastic surgery and for body enhancement. But it's much more than a cosmetic buzzword. And that's really what I want to talk to you about today is what role does collagen play in health and how can you actually enhance your own collagen and why do you want it to do it? All right, so collagen is a natural protein that plays an absolutely fundamental and key role in keeping your body strong and resilient, all right? It is also important if you want your body to heal naturally. So let's go ahead and start by defining what is collagen and what does it do for our health, all right? Ready? Let's dive in. So. I told you that collagen is a protein. In fact, it's one of the most abundant proteins in our body. Our body's largely made out of protein, okay? It makes up about 30% of our body's protein content. Imagine that, that's like a third of our body is actually made of collagen. And what collagen does is it acts like scaffolding between our tissues and our organs. It kind of holds everything together, all right? So if you imagine a building that is actually our body, the stuff inside it, the scaffolding, all right, that, that actually helps keep everything together is actually made of collagen. That's 30% of our body. Now, this is kind of like a protein net. It provides structure though. Net's kind of like soft and flexible. This actually provides tensile strength and structure, right? You ever see inside a building, in the size of the walls of the building, they'll actually have iron rods and poles. This is kind of like that. It provides actually structure and support. And what does it support? Well, it supports not only skin, but it also supports our muscles. It supports our bones and our connective tissue that's found in joints. All right, um, really, really important. And in fact, the word collagen itself actually means glue. It comes from a Greek word, kola, all right, uh, which actually means glue. All right, so you get to think about collagen as the glue and the structural support of our body. Now. If you don't have enough collagen, why is that a problem? Well, based on what I just told you, your body is going to become weakened and our structures actually um, start to fall apart, right? And in fact, as we age, that's actually what happens. If you, uh, our collagen starts to actually decline. Um, sagging skin needs more collagen. Joints that aren't working so well, in fact, they may be painful, not enough collagen. Collagen is wearing down, all right? And collagen is actually really, really important for healing as well. So if you're older, an older person who cuts themselves, all right, not going to heal. Even if it's like a, uh, you know, you're, cut, you're cutting uh, uh, vegetables in the kitchen. Oops, you sliced your skin. All right. When you were a kid, right, or you're a teenager, or even in your 20s, that wound healed up fast. You're 50, you're 60, or maybe even older, that wound starts to heal more slowly. You know why? Your, your collagen levels are actually down and you need collagen for actually healing, all right? If you have surgery, um, now you're really doing cutting, uh, very deliberately, intentionally. Somebody who's older getting surgery is always gonna heal more slowly than somebody who's younger, who kind of bounces right back really quickly, all right? Older people take a little longer to heal up and that's partly due to the lack of collagen, declining collagen as we age. There's no magic age. The collagen begins to decline. It, it's kind of, you know, kind of like we start, we, we have a lot of it, maintain it. Um, and then at a certain point, it starts to wane. Like, let's say 60 years old and above, maybe for some people even younger. Um, but that is actually a connection 
between collagen and aging, this protein that makes up 30% of our body, goes down when we age. And because this protein is important for structural strength, resiliency, healing, that's why I'm actually making this video about collagen so you can actually understand why it's important. It's not just injecting your lips, all right? Now, your body's actually making collagen right from the time that you're, you were still in your mom's womb, all right? And after you were born, it was still making more collagen. Of course, as you're getting older and growing up, your body has to shape itself and that body sculpture requires that collagen to be able to shape your shoulders and shape your hips and shape your uh, the body contours, all right? So through childhood, through adolescence, through young adulthood, your body needs to make collagen. And we don't really notice our collagen declining until, you know, after mid middle age. But in fact, studies have shown that our body's production of collagen goes up as we're, you know, kind of like uh, developing. And then after about 25, the production of collagen slows down. Doesn't mean that it breaks down. It means that it starts to slow down. We start to notice our collagen problems when actually when our collagen is breaking down. But our production of collagen slows down when we're about 25 or so. All right. And that's why even people who are young adults, if you're, um, you know, over 25 and you're watching this, you got to think about collagen, too, because your body's not making as much as it used to. But that means that your body's not as resilient or as strong as it used to be. That's why collagen is actually a real important subject. And if you're somebody who is thinking about longevity, which is what a lot of people are now, it's a very, very popular subject. And in fact, my research is going into longevity, healthy vibrant longevity is what I'm actually working on. But if you want to actually get there, meaning older ages, all right, however long you actually want to live or wind up living, you need collagen in order to be able to have, get you through that whole way. All right. Now, I've given you mostly a description of collagen that talks about structure and strength and ways that you can actually easily see or feel, right? Bones, joints, skin, but actually collagen is found elsewhere in your body as well. For example, in your eyes, did you know that your cornea, which is like the crystal clear face of a watch, it's on the front, that's what you put a contact lens on, all right? That cornea, the clear part, is actually made of collagen. And right? the collagen fibers are lined up perfectly, so they're optically transparent. That means the collagen, even though it's a, it's a protein structure, is aligned so that light can go right through it. You can see right through it like a drinking glass, right? Like this, all right? That's what you're like, like the, the collagen orientation protein is aligned in a way that light can go right through it. Now, collagen is also found in your blood vessels all over your body, all right? Now, you know how many blood vessels we have? We have 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels. That's so extensive that if you pull out all your blood vessels and line them up end to end to end to end, you'd form a ribbon that would wrap around the earth twice. That's how extensive it is. That whole structure is actually partly constructed out of collagen. So if you want good vascular health as you're aging, and remember, your body slows down collagen production after the age of 25. By the time you're 50 and 60, you start noticing the breakdown of collagen. All right. But if you want good vascular structure, you need to pay attention to collagen. And the good news, by the way, I'm going to tell you ways of things that you can eat and lifestyles you can actually eat, uh, undertake, lifestyle habits that actually help you with collagen. So don't worry. I'm going to give you the payoff on this video. All right. Very soon. Now, the other thing that you need to know is that even your heart contains collagen. Now, your heart's about yay big. All right. It's kind of shaped like an oblong uh, uh, oval sits at an angle in your chest, it's got a beat, all right? And uh, the skeleton of your heart that gives it its shape is made out of collagen. And so are the valves in your heart. Now, your heart has got four chambers in it. You've got the atria, two atria, and you've got two ventricles. The atria kind of fill with blood. The ventricles pump it out in different directions. The right side handles the lung, the left hand uh, side handles the rest of your body, but there are valves, uh, okay, that are throughout your heart. Those valves are made out of collagen. So you might have heard of people who have valve problems, mitral valve problem, mitral valve prolapse, mitral valve replacement, or you may have heard of the aortic valve. Oh, somebody I know had a big, a big time surgery. They had their aortic valve replaced. That's what we're talking about. And usually 
when those valves are replaced, it's because the valves have failed, meaning they're not sealing the chambers anymore, or maybe they're stuck. Um, and part of the reason is that the collagen is actually not doing its job, all right? Collagen is also found in your spine. Your spine is made of these bones called vertebrae, right? Like you've seen it in Halloween, the Halloween skeleton, vertebrae, 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 vertebrae. Between each vertebrae uh, is actually uh, a layer of uh, its joint, and there's a layer of collagen that provides a cushion, all right? So when you actually hear about people who are getting older, oh man, I got back problems. It's usually because the, the collagen, the joints are wearing down, and that can compress on the nerves that are popping out through the spinal cord. So these vertebrae are like basically, um, they're uh, like shells and they've got a little uh, uh, a tunnel in between and that's where the spinal cord goes down. So now we're tipping it up, spinal cord goes down, the little nerves pop out to the left and pop out to the right. You've got two vertebrae, but the nerves are coming out right through this gap. If they crush down because you don't have enough collagen, you're gonna have pain, all right? So collagen, very, very important for not only proper structure and strength, but actually prevent you from actually having the kind of broad chronic back pain, sciatica. That's a, a, a really big one when you actually have um, the, the vertebrae crushing down or cervical vertebrae in the neck, all right? Eventually, we all wind up having wear and tear of those uh, joints. And then that can crush down. And now you've got arm pain and back pain and leg pain. So... Collagen, really, really important for your skeleton as well. Collagen is found in our mouth, in our gums, and in our teeth, uh, and our muscles have collagen as well, all right? About 6% of your muscle isn't actually muscle fiber, actually made out of collagen, right? Think about the shape, your bicep, you actually need to actually have uh, collagen holding that shape, that classic football shape that it actually has. Now, I'll tell you a little bit more about collagen now. Collagen is a protein, and proteins are made out of what? Do you know? Amino acids, right? So collagen is a protein. Proteins are made out of amino acids. And amino acids are basically the building blocks of our body, right? For life to have formed on Earth, basically amino acids were created out of raw chemicals, and then the amino acids came together, and we started to form proteins, and that's basically how we crawled out of the swamp, out of the soup, all right? Now, if you are a science geek, and you really, really want to uh, know uh, what are the proteins in collagen? Well, the main ones in collagen are glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, right? Those are the three, glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. But most of you guys are not gonna be science geeks, all right? Um, uh, uh, but here's what you do need to know. These amino acids, right? They're kind of like little fibers. Uh, they're twisted together, all right? Uh, like in a, like three, imagine three, strings that are twisted together. Now, what's going to, what are you going to form? You're going to form a twisted rope. That's what gives it strength. In fact, we call it a triple helix. You might have heard about helix in biology, like DNA is a double helix. DNA is pretty important. Well, collagen, which is also very important, is a triple helix. It's three strings of protein that you twist around. Imagine the strength of trying to pull that apart. Okay, twisted piece of twine. That's what collagen actually is. And that's what gives it its strength. Now, your body relies on these twisting structures, right? To be able to keep your skin nice and plump, all right? Uh, uh, and give it its like structure. It has to keep your joints flexible, right? Look at this, my joints flexible. You need collagen to be able to do that. And your muscles have to be strong. You need that collagen, all right? And if you wanna look youthful, all right? Back to something that we all relate to, vanity, right? We look at ourselves in a mirror, if you uh, actually want to kind of look the way that you remember yourself looking, that you want to look, you need collagen on your skin because when your collagen in your face, for example, starts to break down, that's when people start to look skeletal, all right? They start to, they, their cheekbones start jutting out. They start, uh, their face changes, right? Like you're, and then of course the skin sags and you change even more. Okay, collagen important, important as we age, slows down production after 25, when you get to middle age, you start noticing collagen breaking down and that's when you have back pain and your heart valves start to fail and your face starts to change, you know, all the things that we care about, right? And if you want to actually look youthful, you're going to need to maintain your collagen as you age. And there are different foods and lifestyle things you can do to help you maintain that collagen. That's what's important, all right? That's what this video is going to be about. Hey there, I've got something important to share with you. 
And that is my guide to the three healthy foods that you might want to avoid if you're looking for longevity. Many products that are marketed as nutritious can actually undermine your health. And if you want to find out more about these sneaky ingredients and how to make better choices, then just click on the link below the video for all the details. It's very important to know what's really in your food. And this resource that I'm giving you gives you a head start. Get it right now for free in the description below. Or you can access the guide by scanning the QR code on the screen with your smartphone. Now, let's jump back into the video. But there's one more thing I need to tell you about collagen, and that is that there isn't just one type of collagen. In fact, there's many different types of collagen in our body. In fact, about 28 types as of last count, probably more. We just haven't discovered them yet. That's the amazing thing. We're discovering new things about the human body. Uh, by the way, like we're still discovering new organs in the body, believe it or not. Topic for another video, um, but it's pretty cool. Actually, I'm going to just tell you right now. The interstitium uh, is actually a new organ in the body. And it's very important for our health. We're just beginning to uh, understand how it works. I'm a scientist as well as a doctor, so I'm, I totally geek out on like the discovery of new organs. But back to collagen. At least 28 different types of collagen, right? Okay. So you, you ever go to a candy store and you see all the different kind, kinds of candy out there? Imagine collagen, 28 different types. All right. Now, there is one predominant type of collagen in your body. About 90% of all the collagen in your body is called type 1 collagen. Now, you're gonna, not going to need to remember all these different things, but I do want to give you enough background so that, you know, if you ever talk about it with somebody, you have some knowledge about it. 90% of our collagen in our body, the stuff we rely on, is type 1 collagen, all right? And this is the type of collagen that you need to heal a wound, cut yourself. Ooh, you got to actually heal it from the inside out. Stuff's got to grow, including collagen, and then the skin's got to close, all right? You're going to have to wound closure, that involves collagen as well. And then if a scar forms, it's going to be collagen there too. All right. Now, type 1 collagen, important for wound healing. All right. Whether it's trauma, surgery, whatever it is, the collagen in your tissue, by the way, also, once it starts healing, remember, it like forms a structure. It also guides tissue regenerations because once you actually have those struts, all right, the scaffolding in a wound, for example, then stem cells are going to come out. Now, stem cells are regenerative cells that are inside our own body, and they're gonna actually come out and they're gonna stick and follow the scaffolding to rebuild the tissue that needs to be rebuilt. Now, if you're interested in hearing more about stem cells, uh, I wrote a book called Eat to Beat Disease. Let me show you where it is, right here, Eat to Beat Disease. It's a whole chapter on stem cells, regeneration, and the foods that can actually help you do regeneration, speed up regeneration as well. And by the way, I just tell you one of those foods is dark chocolate. All right, so you got to read the book if you want to find all the foods I'm telling you that can actually help you regenerate. But for regeneration, those stem cells will follow along the collagen, and the collagen will actually help the skin close and it'll actually help um, uh, scar form so you don't actually break open again. And it provides the strength for your tissue. Like, how many times have you cut yourself, right? Each time you needed collagen as well. All right, now before we dive into the foods and habits that can help boost collagen, all right. I'm going to actually tell you that eating collagen helps your body make more collagen. So in other words, eating the collagen doesn't put the collagen that you ate into your joints or into your skin. And that's how it's sometimes discussed. And that's not how it works. All right. And I used to be very skeptical when people would tell me, oh, I eat collagen um, uh, because collagen is actually good for my joints. I used to say that's BS. There's no way that what you're eating will actually do survive stomach acids. All right, but here, let me tell you exactly what actually happens. When you eat collagen, which is a protein made out of amino acids, when you swallow it into your stomach, all right, what winds up happening is that the stomach acid will digest the collagen that you've eaten. We're gonna talk about what foods that's in. You're gonna chop it up into a lot of pieces. Now you're gonna have a soup of different collagen fragments, and those collagen fragments get absorbed into our bloodstream, right? So it does break it down into component parts like amino acids. But not everything is broken down. So you've got all these collagen fragments. And it turns out that the collagen fragments can activate the cells in our joints, in our skin, in our heart, in other parts of our body. Those collagen fragments are biologically active and they can actually stimulate 
are cells that produce collagen called fibroblasts to make more collagen. So when you eat collagen, you're, you, it gets in your stomach, your stomach acid chops up into pieces, and, and parts of these collagen fragments uh, float around your body, and they activate cells that naturally make more collagen. Now, the other thing that happens when you actually eat collagen is that that chopping process of digestion, the stomach acid chopping up that collagen, a lot of it actually does become just free-floating amino acids. And you know what happens? Your body needs amino acids to develop more protein. All right. So you've heard, you know, people talk about hey, as you get older, you actually need to maintain your protein. You want to have enough protein in your diet. Absolutely true. All right. Um, because partly that amino acids that come from protein that your stomach chops up, they're used to build more protein in your body. But the key, it's not like, you know, if you eat muscle, uh, animal muscle, like uh, a steak, that is actually going to go straight to your muscle to build new muscle. Nope. Actually, protein that you eat, wherever that protein comes from, and there's plenty of plant-based proteins, but wherever that protein comes from, the stomach acid chops it up during digestions and it uh, creates amino acids. And those amino acids are what your body actually uses in order to build more protein. The fragments from collagen that you eat, chop, 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 chop into fragments, circulate in your body, they can actually activate your cells called fibroblasts to actually create more natural collagen. What, what kind of collagen you need in the place you need it. All right, and by the way, this is how collagen works to benefit your skin, your hair, your muscles, your joints. And the same thing actually happens whether you're eating collagen from your food or you actually take collagen as a dietary supplement. The only thing about collagen dietary supplements, I think is that as I told uh, everyone who's watched my videos, when you get a supplement, you want to really look at the ingredients to make sure that there is, isn't anything that the manufacturers have put into the supplement that you're not comfortable with putting into your body, right? So I'm not gonna go talk too much more about that other than the fact that collagen supplements work the same way, all right? So what is the evidence, all right? Because I'm all about evidence. What is the evidence, clinical evidence, in people that collagen works to benefit your bones and joints? So a clinical study from Penn State University, look at 97 athletes, okay? These are athletes who had a lot of wear and tear and pain in their uh, joints and their muscles from their sport, right? Whatever they were doing actually like really gave them a serious workout. They were sore afterwards. And half the subjects were actually given gelatin. Now, gelatin, like jello, is actually made of collagen. That's like all collagen, right? They were given it for 24 weeks. That's six months. And another group, okay, a part of the group was given a placebo, right? That's how you do a clinical study. You your test uh, substance, which is a collagen, which is jello, gelatin. And the other one, uh, just a placebo for um, 24 weeks or six months. And the group that actually received the gelatin, the collagen, had a 37% decrease in their joint pain. 37% decrease in their joint pain, all right? Um, another study from Washington State University looked at 80 elderly people. Now that study from Penn State looked at young people, young athletes. This one looked at 80 elderly people with osteoarthritis. Now osteoarthritis is wear and tear pain in your joints because you've actually worn down a lot of the uh, joints uh, made out of collagen, right? And now you've got bone on bone, okay? And these people all had joint pain, bone on bone pain, osteoarthritis for at least three months, all right? If you're an older person, like 16 and above, you probably have osteoarthritis somewhere in your body, all right? And if you know people who are elderly, I guarantee you they're gonna have osteoarthritis. That's actually just a normal part of aging because the collagen wears down, which is why we're talking about collagen in this video. Now, in this group of 80 elderly people, uh, some of the subjects were given collagen made from chicken bones. Now, we're going to talk about this later, but if you boil down chicken bones, you know, basically like a carcass, uh, you're going to wind up getting this like very, very nutrient rich broth. A lot, all the collagen in the chicken bones are going to actually kind of dissolve into the soup, right? So, this is basically why probably your grandmother told you have some chicken soup, it's really, really nutritious. Well, it's a nutritious broth. Chicken broth is very, very nutritious, and part of the nutrients in it are um, actually uh, uh, collagen from the chicken, right? Okay, this protein, all right? And what they found is that those elderly adults who were given the chicken broth actually had their joint pain significantly decreased, okay? Now, let's now talk about 
foods that help your body produce collagen because chicken soup is actually one of them. I'm going to come back to that. But the first food I want to talk about, are you ready? Let's talk about food number one. So if you're taking notes, now's the time that you pull out your paper and pad or pull it up on your mobile phone. All right. Food number one that helps your body build collagen is foods that contain high amounts of vitamin C. C is in Charlie. All right. And the reason is vitamin C is necessary to help your body make collagen naturally, right? Remember, production slows. So you want to actually make sure it's got the fuel it needs that you make more collagen. It's a cofactor. Vitamin C is a cofactor for the enzymes, for the machinery in your body, the factory, your body's collagen factory. You need vitamin C to actually, you know, grease the joints so that you're, so to speak, so that your body can actually work more collagen. And people who can regularly consume high amounts of foods that contain vitamin C, guess what? Studies have shown that they've got better skin elasticity, all right, bounce back faster, and they also heal their wounds faster, however they get their wounds, all right? Now, the other benefit of eating foods with high amounts of vitamin C, guess what? Vitamin C is an anti-inflammatory bioactive. So not only do you get to build your joints and build your get better skin, uh, but you also actually are going to lower inflammation in your body as well. In fact, some clinical studies that I wrote about in Eat to Beat Disease actually show that um, people with an autoimmune disease called lupus, if they're eating foods with high amounts of vitamin C, that their lupus flares are much less frequent and uh, much less severe. And they're inflammatory blood markers, C-reactive protein which is, you know, what your doctor might measure, the biomarkers are down if you eat foods that are high in vitamin C, all right? More collagen, better collagen, building collagen, less inflammation. That's all great, right? Like that all decreases the risk of actually developing chronic diseases when you actually lower nutrition. Now, there was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that women who have a higher intake of vitamin C from fruits and vegetables, all right, are 17% less likely to experience dryness and 11% less likely to um, have wrinkles, a wrinkly appearance on their skin, right? This is just from eating foods containing, uh, fruits, food, fruits and vegetables containing vitamin C. So like, less dryness, dry skin, and less wrinkling. So when do we actually think about dryness and wrinkling the skin? Well, as we age, right? People who are aging, no, we're all aging, all right? So I'm, I'm talking about sort of in the second half of your life. If you're in the second half of your life and you start noticing your skin is getting drier, more parched looking and wrinkly, okay, that's what we classically saw call aging skin. It's because you're having less collagen in your skin. And if you have more vitamin, foods containing vitamin C, your um, symptoms are actually going to be, the signs are going to be not as bad, all right? So my pro tip is to load up your uh, plate when you're eating with colorful foods, fruits and vegetables. This is like eating the uh, rainbow because there are a lot of those colorful foods actually have vitamin C. So what are the foods that you might wanna eat that are have, high, have high vitamin C to help your body make more collagen, which is better for your hair, your skin, your joints, etc. Okay. Here's my list. Strawberries. I love strawberries, all right? High in vitamin C. Tomatoes, really high in vitamin C, all right? Um, bell peppers, like could be red ones, it could be green ones, it could be yellow ones, all contain a lot of vitamin C. Broccoli contains a lot of vitamin C, all right? Uh, kale as well, that's a brassica family. Guava, um, it's a, a fruit, um, it contains vitamin C. Kiwi, you know, the little green emerald-like uh, fruits, I strongly advise you to try it if you have it, but they're really delicious, super easy to eat for breakfast, great vitamin C properties, also good for dietary fiber, good for gut health. All right, it's a super simple little thing to eat that's good for your body. Uh, cantaloupe, right? Nice ripe cantaloupe, which I love to eat. And pineapple, all right? So I like to buy like a, when I see a pineapple, I don't get a pre-cut, I like to have it on my counter, actually, it looks pretty nice, and uh, it'll ripen over time. You can smell it if you smell the base of it. Um, uh, you can smell that nice ripe pineapple flavor. So that's what I do when I'm buying it. You want it to feel that the f when you buy, go to a grocery store and you buy pineapple, see if it kind of is a, not, not very soft, but when it's actually kind of uh, the flesh itself, you can feel from the outside of the skin. You can compress it a little bit. 
Look at the bottom, smell the base. All right, that's what I always do. It should smell like a pineapple that's going to get ripe. And you're going to bring it home, it's going to get even riper and smell even better. And another little tip that I use for buying pineapples. All right, wiggle the, the top uh, leafy, you know, those little cactus leaves. Wiggle it. When it's wiggly, it means that actually it's on its way to being ripened. So you want to buy a pineapple that's on its way being to being ripened. All right, not too raw. All right, like a super hard pineapple, no scent at all at the base, and like the top doesn't wiggle. Look for another one that actually has that property because when you bring it home, you stick it on your counter for a couple of days. I guarantee you, it's actually going to start to ripen more. Don't put it in the fridge. Just cap it in your counter, and you'll start to actually uh, get that uh, higher, stronger aroma. It'll get a little more wiggly, and the flesh will be soft. A couple of days, slice it open. How do I do it with pineapple? I know we're going to get back to the whole vitamin C and collagen story, but I just want to tell you because I love pineapples. You um, cut the top off, all right? Uh, and um, then what I like to do is just take that football-like pineapple, cut it straight down on a wooden cutting board. All right, now you got two halves. It's got the skin on it. Skin, not edible. I don't recommend it, all right? Um, it's got a lot of dietary fiber, but don't eat it. It doesn't taste good, all right? And what you do is you just like with two halves of the pineapple on your cutting board, all you got to do is like slice vertically down to remove the skin. Don't take away too much of that delicious flesh. Scrape off all the skin. I like to kind of wash it off. And oh, by the way, make sure you wash your pineapple. Here's a little pro tip. That pineapple used to be in a tree, fell on the ground almost certainly. All right. Or, or was sitting in the bottom of a box someplace. Probably sat in an airplane, maybe a truck for a long time and sat in the back of the grocery store. Wherever it is. It might have even been transported by a horseback or donkey back, whatever. Wash it. Rinse it under the sink before you cut into it. All right, for 60 seconds in cold water. Sing happy birthday twice to your pineapple. All right, and then cut it in half, like I said, on a cutting board. And then just literally vertical slices to get off all the skin, throw the skin away. All right, now you get this beautiful two halves of pineapple. And they're just in the right size. And they because you cut the base, like cut the base and cut the leaves off, top off. So you've got flat surfaces. Now you can actually cut it very safely. I always get worried because um, if you peel it off, the pineapple is kind of slippery. You can cut yourself. You're going to have need collagen to heal it, but actually um, better to be safe uh, with the pineapple. So that's my little tip on pineapple because I like pineapple. One last thing for you to know about pineapple, helps digestion, and it's got a bioactive called bromelain, okay, that you eat. Uh, and it's also a bioactive that's good for your body uh, as well. All right. Okay. So enough about pineapple. Now you know foods that contain vitamin C's, strawberry, uh, tomatoes, green, uh, bed, bell peppers, broccoli, kale, guava, kiwi, cantaloupe, and pineapple are some of my favorites. All right. Incorporate, try to incorporate one or more of these into your diet every single day. You don't need to do the same thing every day. Switch them out. Make it like something that you enjoy doing. All right. And if there's one that you don't really like, oh man, I don't really like kale. I don't like cantaloupe. You know, don't worry about it. Switch to something else. That's the best way to use food as medicine, actually to um, make it work for you. All right. And you should be uh, including the foods that are part of your preferences. All right. But try to eat some foods with vitamin C every single day. And um, the key to using food for health is consistency. Do something consistently all the time. All right. So collagen health, vitamin C foods, regular part of your diet. All right. Um, now, there's another hidden benefit to vitamin C foods. All right. Um, not only does it help your body produce collagen, not only is it uh, anti-inflammatory, but vitamin C also is an antioxidant. So it protects your DNA as well. Again, in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, I write about um, how your DNA is uh, hardwired. To protect itself, but vitamin C can help to uh, put a shield uh, over your uh, over your DNA to prevent it from getting damaged. All right, and by the way, also protects these antioxidant uh, properties. Also protects your collagen from being damaged by free radicals. Now, these are free radicals that you know might be from pollution in the air, from ultraviolet radiation, from off gassing, from uh, artificial uh, preservatives or flavorings or additives in your food. Protect your DNA, protect your collagen. Vitamin C will actually uh, do that. All right. So, not only does it actually help your body make new collagen, it also helps to protect the collagen that you have as well as your DNA.
All right, ready for food number two? Food number two, that's good for collagen that anybody can actually uh, make at home or, or have at home is bone broth. All right, and you've probably heard about bone broth. It's all over the internet. Uh, people talk about bone broth all the time, but I like to have a different perspective because I'm not somebody that automatically jumps on the, uh, a trend because everybody's talking about it. In fact, I like to go back to tradition and ask, okay, what are the things that are important that everybody sticks to over generations? Well, there, in almost every culture, the food tradition is that bone broth is really, really healthy. And that's why it should be on your radar. Every culture has a version, some kind of version of bone broth. And how do you make bone broth or how do different cultures make bone broth? I mean, just ask your grandmother um, uh, how she makes it. Usually from the leftover bones and maybe with a little bit of flesh hanging onto it, the carcasses, the joints, the wings, the rib cage, you know, chickens, turkey, duck, beef, pork, you name it. You can use any kind of leftover carcass from cooking. And I know I'm talking to people who um, are omnivores and not uh, uh, vegetarians and and not vegans, but I'm sorry, you're gonna have to bear with me. Uh, it's really the meat protein uh, uh, that actually contains the collagen, right? So what do you do? You take these bones and carcasses, put them into a big heavy pot. This is what I do. Fill it up with water just to the tip of wherever the bones are. You don't, you don't need to completely flood the compartment. Uh, however many you have, all right, bones, put them into the pot, all right? Fill it up right to the top so the water just covers the top of the bones, all right? Turn it on high to boil it, get it to a boil, like a real vigorous boil. Then turn it way down to the lowest possible simmer. And in the meantime, uh, chop up some vegetables, right? So I like to add carrots and onions. I'm gonna put a bay leaf in if you want. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can actually put in there, scallions, or if you wanna do it Asian style, um, add some ginger. You wanna have a gingery bone broth, absolutely delicious. You can make ramen out of it, I mean, ramen bowl. Um, you can steam rice with it. There's all kinds of things you can actually do with this lovely ginger flavor. Um, but if you do it sort of like Western style, Mediterranean style, take an onion, take a, a, some garlic, take some carrots, stick them in there, all right? And you're gonna wind up getting like the veggie uh, flavors. You're gonna get some of the bioactives in there as well, along with the collagen. Now, you simmer low, 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 low. You can simmer over, overnight. If you don't feel comfortable keeping the heat on, just keep it out though, all right? Put a lid on it uh, while it's really hot, all right? And then if you're gonna turn it off, don't worry, the, the temperature differential will suction the cat lid down, so it'll be safe, all right? The next morning though, turn it back up to do a boil. That way it'll kill off any bacteria, if any bacteria grew, and then you'll be back in business, all right? The longer you actually simmer your bone broth, and you know, you've probably heard about this at a Japanese restaurant. They're like 36 hour bone broth or broth for the ramen, ramen broth. That's what it means. Like they're, they're boiling, 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 or more and more collagen is gonna come out. All the collagen from the joints of the carcass and the bones are gonna dissolve right out into the broth. Very, very rich in amino acids, especially glycine and protein, right? That's why, again, your grandmother actually said, have some chicken broth or have some pork broth or beef broth. This actually is very rich in these micronutrients, um, amino acids, as well as collagen. And when you actually simmer for hours and hours and hours, you're going to extract all these amino acids into the broth as well, along with some of the minerals from the bone. All of this bone broth supports collagen production. So if you care about you know, your skin and your joints and, and how much protein you're getting in bone broth is a really great way of doing it. Now, you should also know that traditional healing, traditional medicine often use bone broth as part of their um, toolbox, all right? So they would um, find a way to actually serve up bone broth for joints, uh, joint repair and pain. Um, and by the way, there's even some new evidence. Fast forward to present day, looking at the future, the collagen can even help with gut health as well, all right? Specifically, leaky gut syndrome, looks like collagen can help build the lining of the gut and maybe strengthen the gut to prevent the leak. Very important, all right? Because um, when you've got leaky gut, it's sort of like the lining of the inner lining of the gut kind of 
starts to create holes. It's like like a diver with holes in the wetsuit. Now seawater is going to come in, all right. Or in the case of the gut, like your uh, it's stuff from the gut that will actually get into the lining of the gut. Now that's very very irritating, all right. So bone broth, the collagen seems actually to be healing for that. Makes a lot of sense, all right. Now the bone broth is also hydrating. So think about that. So if you're, if you're looking about dry skin, for example, um, just having bone broth not only builds a collagen, but it also hydrates your body. Um, that's one thing that happens also when people tend to get older, they don't stay hydrated, properly hydrated. So bone broth is a way of sort of knocking out both of those things all at the same time. Good for skin, good for joint health, good for bone health, good for hydration. That is bone broth. Okay, ready for food number three? Food number three, Leafy greens, sulfur-rich vegetables. I'm talking about salt, uh, brassica vegetables. So broccoli, kale, all right, the brassica. Spinach is another one, all right? These are the leafy greens. Now, I don't need to tell you that leafy greens are beneficial for your health because you already know that, all right? But what I do need to tell you is that when you actually have leafy greens, the brassica family, they can actually have isothiocyanates or ITCs and sulforaphanes, all right? And they also have a lot of dietary fiber, which is good for gut health. And when you have um, a well-fed gut because of dietary fiber, your gut bacteria are well-fed, but gut bacteria help you lower inflammation in your body as well. So leafy greens help you, your body lower inflammation. And guess what? The isothiocyanates, the ITCs and sulforaphanes, they help support collagen production. All right, sulforaphanes are important for supporting your own body's production of collagen. All right. Um, what does sulfur do? Sulforaphanes. What does the sulfur do? Well, remember I told you collagen is three chains of protein that are twisted together, right, into a triple helix. Sulfur actually stabilizes that triple helix, right? They're, they actually make the, the helix even stronger to give it the, that strength, that tensile strength. And by the way, leafy greens like spinach, as I said, uh, but also kale, a good source of vitamin A. We talked about vitamin C earlier to help your body as the cofactor coenzyme to actually create uh, collagen. Well, vitamin A actually has been shown to stimulate, trigger new collagen production in aging skin. All right, so here's another great way to actually have your greens. Now you're actually stimulating uh, with vitamin A, you're stimulating collagen production in your skin. So spinach, kale, great way to do that. When you've got collagen in your skin, guess what? You're going to have greater elasticity, all right? Uh, you want it to be able to stretch and spring back, all right? Smoother appearance, all right? That's also what we want. You want it's supposed to wrinkly, uh, lots of lines. Sulfur-rich vegetables are something you can easily add to your diet. Um, uh, some of them that I love, I like broccoli. Um, I like broccoli rub. I like regular broccoli. By the way, here's a little pro tip when you buy broccoli. Don't just get the florets, all right? Unless you're going to buy frozen, then they usually just sell you the florets. Florets are good. They actually have that so those sulforaphanes. But what you need to know is that a broccoli plant is a really um, long, it's got a long trunk, like a stem, and then it's got the florets at the very end. Mostly the stem. That's The plant is mostly stem, all right? Um, uh, and we tend to eat only the florets. But... If you go to the farmer's market, buy the whole broccoli, don't throw the stem away, all right? A lot of people used to trim the stem and throw it away. I used to do it too, years ago. But keep the stem because the sulforaphanes and a lot of the good beneficial dietary fiber are in the stem. And if you go, wait a minute, I have no idea what I'm gonna do with the stem. Here's what I tell you I do, all right? Um, sometimes you wanna um, skin the stems because the outside skin of the stem can be a little tough. Dietary fiber, all right? But sometimes you want to uh, uh, basically skin it and slice it in like diagonally into kind of medallions. Uh, now you can actually saute that in it, it's absolutely delicious. Whatever you're cooking the tops on, you could saute the broccoli stems separately. Or guess what? You don't want to deal with the broccoli stems that way. Put them in a blender and make a broccoli soup. You know, one of the favorite broccoli soups that I have, I actually, I wrote, a, I included the recipe in here. It's broccoli oregano soup try it it is so good all right and you get all the goodness of the broccoli you can make it with broccoli florets of course uh which i like to steam but you can actually make it with the stem all right i'm just telling you a little tip all right 
So um, another source of uh, onion, uh, sulfur in your diet, onions and garlic. These are allium. They're not brassica. Onions have sulfur. Garlic has sulfur. That's why it partly re is responsible for that really pungent, potent smell that you get. Wonderful smell for cooking, by the way. All right. Those are also sulfur. Sulfur actually makes your collagen stronger. All right. And the vitamin A from spinach and kale makes your body make more collagen as well. All right. Hey there. Are you ready to use food to improve your health? I do cover a lot in my YouTube videos, but there's only so much time to dive deep into how to use food as medicine. That's why I created my Eat to Beat Disease course. In my course, I walk you through how to use everyday foods that you can find in your grocery store to boost your body's health defenses. This is all based on my research and everything is rooted in science. And I made it super easy to follow with practical everyday tips. Whether you're trying to prevent disease or just wanna optimize your health for longevity, my Eat to Beat Disease course gives you all the tools to make it real, and to help you get lasting changes that'll help you live longer and live better. To learn more, click the link below or scan the QR code on the screen. I can't wait to get started together in my course. Now, back to the video. So, you know, a study actually had been looking at women who ate leafy greens, they actually have fewer wrinkles than people, uh, women who did not eat leafy greens as well, all right? Um, by the way, I talked about the spinach. So I'm, since I'm giving you little cooking tips, I'm going to tell you one way I like to do spinach, whether you use like grown up spinach or whether you use baby spinach. I learned this dish um, uh, from uh, a restaurant that was cooking Spanish food. Wash your spinach leaves, right? Um, uh, take some extra virgin olive oil in a cast iron pan or a stainless steel pan, all right? Great polyphenols, good healthy monounsaturated fatty acids. Slice up some garlic, throw it in there. The flavor up the um, the oil with garlic, all right, um, and then throw your spinach leaves in there. Big pile of spinach leaves will reduce really fast into not very much spinach, so you want to make sure you buy enough or do enough at a time. I usually fill up whatever the whole pan is. It's going quickly uh, once the spinach kind of wilts. It'll it quickly melt down into a kind of like a much smaller amount of spinach. I saute that, add a pinch of salt, not too much because you don't want to raise your blood pressure. And then if you want to have some toasted pine nuts and some golden raisins, throw them right in there, okay? Turn it around once or twice. You want to throw a little chili flake in there, take it off, like literally, you'll be done with this thing in like less than five minutes. It's the fastest way to make a the vegetable dish that I actually have that tastes amazing. And you get your vitamin A. And you get your polyphenols from the, from the hydroxytyrosol and oleocanthal and the olive oil. And you get the allicin and the sulfur, sulfur from, uh, from the uh, garlic that you're throwing in there, right? They get a little resveratrol and, uh, or solic acid from the golden raisins as well. See what I'm saying? You don't need to worry about the science, worry about the flavor. But I'm just telling you, people who study food as medicine, like that's what I appreciate uh, about a dish like that, okay? All right. By the way, so everything I'm telling you about is actually how to help support collagen, collagen production, collagen maintenance, collagen repair in your body, all right? And I can throw dishes together in a few minutes that can actually support uh, collagen. And remember, the more leafy greens that you're eating, the more benefits you're going to have for your overall health. These plant-based foods, they've got lots of uh, polyphenols to actually activate your other health, body's health defenses and lower inflammation, boost immune function. All right, good for your gut, your dietary fiber, helps your stem cells, improves your circulation. It's all good. All right, just make sure you find a way to cook greens in ways that you actually enjoy. It's not those greens that you didn't want to eat when you were growing up and your mom's cooking. Find the ones that you absolutely enjoy. All right, food number four. Are you ready? Gelatin. We talked about this already. A little bit of the clinical trial, people getting gelatin, the athletes. Well, gelatin is something that's really useful for cooking. So if you want to go on Google and look up gelatin, G-E-L-A-T-I-N, um, recipe or cooking techniques, and just click on video and watch somebody show you all the different ways to actually make gelatin. So, um, so you can, I'm not going to go through all the tips on how to actually use gelatin, but where would you actually have heard of gelatin? Because I'm sure you're, we're all familiar with it. 
Well, remember the Jello, J E L L O. That's a brand, I think, um, that we used to have growing up, right? That's all collagen, right? It means loaded with those amino acids. It's a great source of protein. We used to have them as kids, right? And your body needs that protein and needs those amino acids. It's really, really great. And that jello, gelatin, that jello, actually was made the same way that the bone broth is made. It's made by boiling down the skin and the bones and ligaments of the pork and chicken. All right. It's a byproduct. The gelatin that you get, you can buy in a grocery store, um, is actually is a byproduct for the food industry. Like they're making things out of chicken and pork and all that kind of stuff, right? And they give it to you as a powder. All right, and gelatin as a powder, which is collagen and collagen fragments, it's colorless, it's flavorless, it can come in a box or a bag, and it dissolves in hot water. And when you dissolve it in hot water, stir it up, and when it cools, you stick it in the fridge. Guess what? It's going to have a jelly-like texture, firmness to it, packed with those amino acids you'd expect from collagen, right? Good for protein, all right? Now, amino acids, by the way, remember, if you have anything with amino acids, your body's going to take those amino acids that you're loading into it and use it to make other proteins that your body actually needs. So how do you make, what do you do with gelatin? Well, you can make your own jello. All right. Um, you want to cut your own seasonal ripe fruits in the summer, go for cherries or go for strawberries or go for blueberries or whenever you're actually, whatever is ripe, all right. That you can actually find, I guess, cherries are a little bit later peaches, in the summer, pears in the fall, whatever it is like amazingly delicious and ripe. By the way, those fruits have their own polyphenols and dietary fiber. Cut them up into small pieces, throw them into um, the gelatin mixture that you boiled with hot water, stirred it, and you can throw the fruit in there, fruit pieces. They're going to settle to the bottom. All right. And uh, if you want to do it like your mom used to do it, make one layer of gelatin, put it in the fridge, when it's kind of firm, add the fruit, then put another layer of gelatin on it. Now it's kind of locked in the middle. If it's floating in the middle, that's actually how you build those layers up. All right, put it in the fridge. Don't add any extra sugar. Don't add any, any other flavorings or anything. Just let the incredible flavors of the ripe seasonal fruits shine through it. All right, um, and then when you cut it, you can eat it. You're gonna get the sweetness. You're gonna get the juice from all these fruits mixing together. By the way, do not do what we used to do. Your, your mom probably did this. I know my mom did it. We used to buy under cans of cut, pre-cut seasonal fruit packed in syrup, which is all added sugar and preservatives and things like that. Uh, don't do that. That's so old school and like, like out of school from today's uh, uh, appreciation of health. Cut your own ripe fruit into pieces, throw them into gel uh, gelatin, put it in the fridge and then really enjoy some fresh jello. Like let's, let's go ahead and work together and reinvent the idea of healthy jello as opposed to that nuclear colored stuff. Remember it was red and bright red and wiggly or bright green or wiggly or bright orange or wiggly. Those that were all artificial colors. And then the, the jelly, the jello stuff that we used to buy packed with added sugar and additives that you don't want in your body. So you want to um, have collagen that's protein in your body and you want to make a dessert out of it, okay, a healthy dessert. It's another way to actually have um, fresh seasonal fruits. Cut them up and do it yourself. Avoid that atomic red fluorescent green uh, that we actually had when we were kids. But doesn't mean that, that Jello, you know, uh, I guess we can't use the brand, but um, invent your own gelatin dessert. Absolutely amazing. And definitely avoid all uh, uh, artificial coloring. All right. Now, by the way, if you're going to make something savory as well, you can uh, throw a little bit of gelatin powder into a soup or a stew, into a sauce you're making. You're going to thicken it up. Right. So that's another way of actually getting protein and amino acids into some of your cooking. Right. So that's actually another way to use gelatin. All right. Now I'm going to switch gears and give you two lifestyle tips on how to naturally boost your body's own production of collagen. All right. Number one, lifestyle tip, exercise. Turns out that regular physical uh, activity, uh, especially strength training and like lifting weights, actually stimulate your body's production of collagen, right? Because your the movement of your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments actually stimulates the cells. Remember those cells called fibroblasts? I told you that make collagen. When you're working out, that the pull that your cells feel 
go, oh, I think we need a little more strength. Let's make a little more collagen. So that's a, like, kind of like a knee-jerk reaction from your cells at the cellular level um, that your muscles and joints need to make, remain strong. Your body will produce more collagen. That's another reason why exercise is important, all right? Now, what you need to know also when it comes to, not your muscle, now when it comes to your joints, you got to realize that exercise is also beneficial for joint health because even though as you get older, you're going to get some wear and tear osteoarthritis, all right? Um, when you're physically active, again, that stretch on those fibroblasts on your joints are going to basically say, hey, can we make a little more collagen here? Now, it's not going to make a huge amount, but it's enough to actually counter some of the joint problems of aging. It'll slow it down a bit, okay? You don't need to hit the gym. You don't for hours. You don't need to have a trainer to get these benefits. Um, uh, these are simple uh, types of exercises you can do at home. Uh, squats or lunges or push-ups, they're all ways to stimulate collagen production in your body. The key thing is consistency. If you really want to do this, don't do push-ups like once a week. Do a few every day, all right? And doing something for as short a time as you have, all right, is better than doing nothing or doing it just rarely, all right? Regular daily physical activity of some sort, particularly strength training, resistance training will actually help your body produce more collagen. Bake this into your daily routine if you can, all right? Can't do it every day for whatever reason, do it a couple of times a week, all right? Do it every other day. That'll actually be better for your joints. All right, lifestyle tip number two for better collagen. All right, this is the opposite of exercise. And what is that? Lifestyle tip number two is sleep. When you're sleeping, your body may be resting, but it's not inactive. In fact, during sleep, your body's factory wakes up. It's a night shift, all right? And it starts doing healing all over the body. And one of the things it does for healing is when you're sleeping, your body produces collagen, all right? So sleep is part of your body's natural repair cycle. Mother Nature figured out during evolution, you know, like you might injure yourself during the day, but when you're sleeping, time to fix things, all right? So your brain is kind of turned off from consciousness, but guess what? The rest of your body is really, really active. By the way, it's not just building collagen, but you rebuild your immune system, heal your gut. There's all kinds of things that are happening when you're sleeping that are good for you um, uh, in any case. But building collagen is one of the things that happens when you are getting good night's sleep. So how do you do this? Well, that's a whole topic for another video, but I can tell you, give you some quick tips right now. Don't drink caffeine late at night, all right? Don't eat midnight snacks late at night because actually you don't get good quality sleep when you've got lots of food in your stomach just as you're starting to go down. Your body sort of needs to stay awake a little bit to digest that food for a while. So you're cutting down on your quality sleep time, which should be about eight hours, all right? Think about that. What's eight hours of sleep? Mm, go to bed at 11 o'clock, get up at seven in the morning. Does that sound reasonable? Or go to bed at midnight and get up at eight? Listen, these days, so many people are working from home. You can figure it out. If you don't have a meeting before eight, you know, go to bed at midnight and get up at eight. Or go to bed at 11 and get up at seven. That's eight hours of healthy sleeping. Before sleeping, don't drink too much alcohol. Alcohol also disrupts your brain waves, So you don't, it's harder to get good quality sleep. And before sleeping, try to put away your mobile device, your laptop. Don't stare at that blue screen. That blue screen, actually the blue light from coming from the screen, even from your phone, even if you turn on dark mode, still got blue light. Um, it actually has been shown to disrupt your uh, sleeping patterns. All right. So basically, uh, if you're thinking about your body's collagen, make sure that you're doing everything possible to get enough good sleep, which is not just good for bones and joints and muscles. Uh, it's also good for overall health and lowering inflammation and avoiding brain fog in the morning, by the way, because while you're sleeping, guess what? Your brain is actually going to be um, purging itself. There's like a whole sewer system. It drains the toxins that have accumulated during the day. So what I try to do is uh, make sure that I actually get a good night, solid night's sleep every single night. Like that's part of my health hygiene is I take about, I care about sleeping uh, and I want to enjoy my sleep as well. You know, sleep is kind of a pleasurable thing. You don't want to be tossing and turning all night if you can avoid it. All right. So think about that. Um, so look, um, how do we know that this is important for sleeping and collagen? Well, there was a study at Case Western University 
that there, there's a medical school that, that looked at the importance of sleep and skin health. This was done by dermatologists. And they showed that in 60 premenopausal women, all right, between just the ages of 30 and 49, all right, that's the range of adults that are pre before menopause. And they looked at their sleep pattern and they found that women who had poor sleep, all right, um, there's a measurement scale that they use called the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index. Guess what? When they correlated sleep and the quality of sleep with the skin, the women who had poorer quality sleep had more aged skin when they actually looked and objectively looked at their skin. Um, they had more fine lines in their skin. They had more wrinkles in their skin. They even had more uneven pigmentation. You know, that's what happens during aging skin. If you look at somebody in their 80s or 90s, you know, they got spots in their skin. The skin isn't evenly colored. Well, that's what actually happened. When the women who had poor sleep, they had more, you know, pigmented, uneven pigment on their skin. And they also had slacker skin. Slack skin means you don't have a lot of resilience, right? Boom. You want to be able to actually have resiliency, all right, on the skin. Um, slack skin, you pull it out and actually stays like saggy, all right? A telltale sign of aging, telltale sign of poor collagen, not enough collagen, not enough sleep, all right? By contrast, in that study from Case Western University of, of uh, premenopausal women between the ages of 40, 30 and 49, the good sleepers, guess what? They had objectively younger looking skin. So it works, all right? So aim for eight hours every night. All right, you want me to be realistic? Seven to nine hours, that gives you some flexibility, right? Just try to get eight hours, but seven to nine hours, somewhere in that window is good, all right? That's the sweet spot for better overall health. And by the way, the other thing of getting good sleep, it lowers your stress levels as well, all right? If you chronically don't get enough sleep, your stress is gonna build and during the day, and that's gonna make it harder for you to actually sleep well uh, later in the evening, again, anyway. So protect your body's collagen, Producing ability, get a calming, good night's sleep, all right? You know what? Before bed, rather than look at your uh, your phone, read a book. Old school, all right? Um, it's, uh, you know, I think two, two of us are just looking at screens these days. I, I love books, all right? Um, you want to pick up one of mine, all right? Actually, you're going to be so excited reading my stuff, you might actually not sleep as well. So read uh, some fiction, something that actually you know, gets your imagination going. Like that's the other thing that we need to be doing. If you don't, have, don't flood yourself with like, you know, little news bits, um, read a book that you really, really enjoy. Make sure your environment's dark, your temperature is cool. You want good restorative sleep. Oh, one last little health tip, like little pro tip on getting sleep. Guess what? That old tradition of chamomile tea, herbal tea, no caffeine, just chamomile. There are bioactives in chamomile that have been shown in clinical research to relax your brain, calm your mind, relax your body, get a good night's rest, all right? Um, and here's one thing, all right? Don't get hung up on any one piece of information I've just given you. Everyone's gonna be different, all right? Everyone's pattern is gonna be different, but just can, can create a consistent evening pattern, all right, that can actually help you get good sleep. Figure out what, what, what works best for you, but, Good sleep is important for collagen as well. So there you have it. Food is medicine, lifestyle tips to help your body boost its production of collagen, protect collagen, all right, and get enough protein in your body and also get some anti-inflammation as well. I hope you learned something new with this video and thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Dr. Lee out. Hi there, if you enjoyed watching this video, I know you'll love the next one. Stay here and check it out and I'll see you there.